It's Vancouver's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Brad W. Rudover is the founder of Country Club X, originally from Michigan, raised by an entrepreneur father and senior level MBA mother. He earned a degree in small business management at Ferris State University. He then moved to Whistler a few months after graduation in late 1999 to be a snowboard bum. Having achieved moderate success with Easy Trivia in Jersey App, Brad decided to create another tech company in 2016, a social network for Country Club members called Country Club X. Well, Brad, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking the time today to be here for all our listeners. Good morning, Robert, and thank you very much for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. Okay, well, tell us a little bit more about yourself. We know you're from Michigan, but give us the details on your current business. Um, so just a little bit about me. I am a serial entrepreneur. Um, so even in college, uh, I had a small computer company that, you know, I would fix computers. Um, not unlike, uh, you know, Dell, um, but I wasn't nearly as big. Um, and so, you know, I, as you mentioned, I had a couple different um, ventures, uh, you know, a few years ago. And so now Country Club X is kind of my latest um, project, I call it. Um, and what, what, it, what it really does is uh, it connects country club members um, across the world so that they can golf at and experience the amenities of private clubs wherever they travel. Um, so um, typically, uh, you know, when you're a member of a country club, you can only really golf at your course and maybe a couple other reciprocal courses. Whereas, uh, you know, I, I noticed that there is kind of a problem in the marketplace that didn't allow members to travel and play private courses. And this is exactly the problem that Country Club X solves. Perfect. Okay. Now, did you need financing to start your company? And how do you currently make money in your business now? Um, so the, the financing came out of my own pocket. Um, and so, uh, you know, luckily I, I have a tech background, so I was able to really keep my costs um, quite low. Um, so I can de essentially develop most of the technology myself. Um, and so, you know, with regards to earn generating revenue, uh, we're at the point where, um, you know, it, it's growing. So we're, we're just under 100 members right now. Um, and so we want to just make sure that everything's going straightforward, um, you know, and, and we don't want to really confuse our, our members by running any ads or anything like that. So there, there's no revenue at this point. Um, but, you know, at later on, as we go forward, I'm sure, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure out the revenue model. Do your passion, the money will follow. Well, and and it's kind of like uh, very similar to the social network. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever seen that movie, but yeah, um, you know, within that movie, uh, Mark Zuckerberg and his partner Eduardo Saverin, you know, uh, Eduardo says to Mark, you know, look, we need to monetize the the website, and Mark replies and says, well, it's cool, and we don't really know what cool is, and so. I guess that's kind of where we're at with Country Club X is that all of the feedback that I've had across the golf community, everyone says it's very cool. And so I really don't want to do anything to compromise that factor. So let's just let it run and see what happens. Okay. Now, what is the long-term vision and what will your company look like in the future? Do you see the company expanding into other areas and where beyond Vancouver, BC or even Canada? Yes, sir. I think that there is a great future for this uh, this project. Um, as as we continue to grow, um, our, our I think our customers are going to demand more out of the technology. They're going to say, "Oh, you know, we want to see different parts of the marketplace that we can use. We want to create communities, or we want to create meetups." So, um, I, I think there are a lot of options to go forward. And and you know, I'm not trying to steer it. I've just created it, and I'm letting the community kind of um, develop it and let us know what they want it to be. Um, and then you know, from there, I think it's it's pretty clear that there's other similar type of sports or or, or leisure that you know this might apply to, such as tennis or. Um, pickleball or basketball. I, I mean, like you can think of any kind of uh, you know social sport where you need people to participate. Um, so you know, certainly 
this might be the first iteration, um, and then we may expand into uh, other markets as well. Okay, well, we've learned a little bit about Country Club X, and we learned a little bit about you, so we want to talk about doing business in Vancouver. What are the biggest benefits for you and being an entrepreneur here in Vancouver, BC? I want you to give us some of the good points about starting a company here, but I also want you to give us some of the tough things or challenges for our listeners so they can keep an eye out for them. I think that's a great question. Um, well, you know, Vancouver was kind of typically known as, a, you know, a, more of like a hippie sort of a city. Um, so I, I'm from the east, you know, like, uh, you know, Michigan. So uh, we're, we're pretty known for kind of uh, industrial sort of things and obviously automotive and, you know, just a lot busier than, than most on the west coast, I would say. Maybe now everything's caught up. But, you know, so, so what Vancouver really looked like for me was that it was uh, it was more of a place where um, you know you can think outside of the box um, you know I, I have to say that the East Coast definitely um, is more about just grinding out whatever you're doing and it's just kind of one dimensional whereas you know uh, out here in Vancouver uh, you're surrounded by oceans mountains um, and, and so it really taps into your ability to kind of be more creative uh, so that's kind of the the feeling I think most people get when they come out here is they, they just feel more connected with nature and uh, they're kind of removed from the daily grind. And so, you, you know, then you have a, a variety of different people here um, that are kind of more on the creative side. Um, and, you know, there's, I mean, it's just a big draw from across Canada, if you think about it, is like the, the weather's uh, pretty great here all year long. I mean, obviously there's a lot of rain, but you know what? We don't get the the minus 20s like they do in you know Ontario and Quebec, and well certainly across like the prairies. So um, you know, I, I think you're getting the best of the best from across the country that are moving out here. So obviously the drawback to that is that there's certainly a lot more demand. Um, on resources such as housing and um, you know just about anything so that drives costs up so you know doing business in Vancouver is expensive so um, and, and even just living in Vancouver is expensive so as long as you understand that and you can generate enough revenue um, you know to sustain that like your business can be very successful here Okay. Now you touched on a point of being connected to nature and that's what uh, Vancouver BC offers. We do some of our best work outside the office. Is there a place in the lower mainland close to where you love or work where you like to go recharge or get inspired to just think about your business? And does it change with the season considering all the rain we get here? Well, Robert, uh, you know, certainly, um, uh, you know, given the nature of my business, uh, I I am a golfer. I'm connected to golf. Uh, So, you know, I, I wrote an article not too long ago about the benefits of golf, and actually I, I called it How Golf Can Change Your Life. Uh, you can see it on LinkedIn. Uh, you can Google that. Um, and so what I say in that is that, you know, there's not many um, sports or activities that you can do where you're outside for four hours at a time. You're experiencing nature, you know, you know, it's a beautiful scenery, there's trees, fresh air, all of those things. Um, So that really helps me to uh, stay grounded. um, And it it allows me to kind of uh, take my mind off of, uh, you know, the daily uh, stresses that you have in your life. Um, And, you know, at the end of it is uh, you kind of come back refreshed and you're able to kind of focus more clearly on what your business objectives are. Um, so I, I think it, it really is beneficial um, to, you know, take up the game of golf. Um, and then, you know, in, in terms of, you know, winter months, sure. Yeah, like uh, we have a lot of rain, so it's not ideal to golf in the rain. Uh, so what I, what I typically do in the winters is I, I spend time at the, at the pool with our two-year-old daughter um, doing swim lessons. So that's, that's a lot of fun, and that allows me to kind of uh, – you know, just experience life through her eyes. 
Okay, well, we have a lot of international listeners, so this next question, I want you to speak to them. I want you to imagine you just moved here from Michigan. If you were to start all over again, and you just moved here to Vancouver, BC, but this time you don't know anyone, knowing what you know now, what would you do, and how would you go about starting all over again as an entrepreneur? It's an interesting question. Um, I, I think that like any opportunity that you can to be social, um, so there, there's a lot of different, you know, um, different social activities that you can participate in. Um, I think there's Vancouver Meetup or something like that. Um, for me, uh, I would say that a that a country club is is by far the best place where you can do networking with very successful people that can you know, then assist you with your business and kind of lead you down a different path that maybe you didn't know of. So, uh, so I, I mean, that's if you're into golf. Um, and if not, you, you know, you can find like maybe like a tennis club or something like that where, where you're in, you know, contact with, you know, uh, many different people from many different backgrounds. Okay, let's talk about your routine for a second here. What does the first hour look like for you when you get up in the morning? Do you have a specific routine or a ritual that helps you get motivated to start your day? Yeah, like so. So for me, I'm I'm quite disciplined, and I I often call myself a robot. Um, So you know, in the mornings, uh, you know, usually up around five thirty, six o'clock, I will immediately. do a kind of a shortened meditation session, maybe about uh, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and then that leads me into, uh, to breakfast, uh, you know, get some protein going, um, you know, check out the, you know, the news and then get right into, uh, you know, emails and communication with, uh, you know, clients and colleagues. And, uh, you know, as you can imagine, your, your day just starts uh, right, right around seven, eight o'clock. Do you think entrepreneurs have to be weird or unique in a positive way or are wired differently? I think uh, the weirder you are, the, the more successful you'll be. Um, it comes down to, uh, you know, being unique, uh, you know, is, is what are you into? Uh, you know, you should be as diversified as possible. Um, don't just be a mainstream type of person. You want to kind of, uh, you know, have your own beliefs, have your own, uh, you know, knowledge and go with it, you know. And, and I think that, you know, uh, you know, being weird uh, actually sets you apart from the rest of the crowd. So it gives you that edge as an entrepreneur being a little bit different. For sure it does. You think differently. You see things differently. Um, and, and there's a lot of people that won't see the angles that you do. Okay, what books are you reading now and why, or even audio books, and can you recommend any books to, uh, for our listeners who are also aspiring entrepreneurs? For sure. Uh, you know, I, I'm currently reading, a, I think it's called E-Myth, um, and uh, that kind of just talks about, um, you know, kind of warning you almost about being an entrepreneur, um, you know, like, so... Um, if you're what, what they term as a technician, you know, like if, if you're highly skilled in uh, a certain industry, you know, you know, going and starting up your own business, uh, you know, it's not as easy as it sounds like, yeah, you might be very good at what you do, but do you know how to run a business? That's that's the question. So it's, I think it's a very good read for anyone that's thinking to become an entrepreneur or anyone that has kind of started an entrepreneurial venture. Um, then, of course, you know, my, my one of my favorite authors is Malcolm Gladwell. So <laughs> I think anything that he writes is fantastic. OK, what online or offline tools do you use on a daily basis? Oh, uh, well, I, I think we've been talking about networking quite a bit here. So I, I have to say that LinkedIn, um, love it or hate it, I, I I absolutely love it. I, I think it's so great to connect with so many different people, and you know what? Like the, the community is is really about helping each other. Um, you know, so I've I've been very fortunate, at least, uh, so I can share my success stories. And um, you know, some people you know don't really utilize it as you should. So you know, I would say that's that's definitely a great tool to use. Um, definitely WhatsApp is, is an awesome tool. You can create groups on there. 
um, and communicate, you know, around the world. So that's definitely a, a great tool. Okay. Now, Vancouver, BC is a very beautiful place to live. We've talked a bit about that, the mountains. Um, we got lots of lakes, rivers, you name it. How do you balance work and how do you relax and not even think about work? And what are your favorite activities to do here in BC? Obviously, you golf, but do you also ski, bike, kayak, hike, or simply go for a drive? Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're so fortunate to live here. Uh, I, I mean, I'm looking out the window and I can see the, the mountaintops with the snow on it. I mean, so it, it's hard for you not to really feel connected to nature here. I mean, you might be downtown Vancouver in the middle of a boardroom, but you look out any window and you're going to see ocean or mountains. So uh, it definitely kind of, uh, you know, makes you a little bit more calm uh, and just have that connection um, so, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I think like anytime that you can get outside here is great. Like, I mean, sea kayaking is uh, such an awesome activity to do, like say in the inner Harbor, uh, you know, it's super calm there. You're going to see some seals and, uh, it's just a really, uh, easy thing to do. Uh, you don't really need any training. So I definitely recommend that if anyone comes out to Vancouver is to, to get on a sea kayak and cruise around a little bit. If you weren't doing what you do now, what would you like to do for a profession? Well, uh, you know, uh, I think what uh, what that Anthony Bourdain guy does is uh, is pretty cool. Uh, he gets to travel around the world, stay at fancy hotels, and eat the best food on the planet. So, uh, you know, if, if I wasn't doing what I was doing right now, I would, I would love to uh, be the, the new Anthony Bourdain. What kind of a job would you not like to do? Couldn't do it. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know if I could do anything underground, you know, like, uh, you know, mining or, you know, cleaning out sewers or, you know, I, I, I don't think I could, I could handle that. In business, what is your favorite word, quote, or sentence that you like to use? Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, synergy is definitely um, a word that I've always kind of used, you know, um, and empowerment. Uh, those are kind of two key words for me. I, I like to, uh, you know, I, I like to, you know, have full autonomy. I like to give full autonomy to anyone that's working with me um, because ultimately you're, you're you're working with someone that you trust and you know that they're going to do whatever is in the best interest of the business. So I think that's, that's a key word is autonomy. What is your least favorite word or sentence you do not like to hear? Micromanagement. I think that, um, you know, how business is going nowadays. Um, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's very kind of strange that, um, you know, uh, you know, systems like Salesforce and uh, all, all of those type of tools, um, they're, they're, they're kind of now trying to like um, essentially, you know, download everyone's information, uh, you know, so that, you know, you don't have that personal touch. And, and I think that uh, those systems are going to fail us um, and because ultimately, you know, every, every single business transaction is to do with people. And so uh, if you don't have that personal touch, uh, you know, your business is doomed for sure. If you had to pick one or two words to describe yourself, what would it be and why? Two words. I would say positive and, uh, you know, energetic. Okay. What keeps you up at night, if anything? Um, well, I, I think as a parent, uh, you know, we're we're relatively new parents. Uh, we have a two year old daughter and uh, I think you just kind of worry about, well, you know, how, what are we doing to set her up for success in the future? And, and are we doing everything we can correctly? You know? And so, uh, you know, we're, we're taking parenting the course, you know, just to make sure that we understand all of the dynamics. Uh, so that's been super helpful. I definitely recommend that to any, um, you know, new parent or, you know, parents, you know, has, you know, older children. Uh, I, I think that, you know, raising kids is, uh, I, I mean, forget about business. That's the most important, you know, thing that you're going to do in your entire life. And, um, 
you know, you study for everything else, you read books about everything else. Well, why aren't you taking a course on uh, how to parent? You know, I think it's a natural thing to do. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. It's it's kind of like you, you need to take a course to even get a driver's license, right? So some of these things that so it is just common knowledge, you think, to do something like that. Okay, now give us the top three things on your inspired life list. This could be a bucket list of any sort, whether you want to write books, TEDx talks, uh, travel more, anything like that? Uh, yeah, there's definitely a few things that I want to accomplish uh, before I leave this planet. Um, so, uh, you know, definitely want to uh, make my way over to uh, Ireland and Scotland to experience the uh, the Lynx courses over there. That That is definitely uh, pretty high on the bucket list. Uh, well, let's throw in Augusta National on there as well. I would love to play Augusta National. Um, uh, so then in terms of, uh, you know, uh, writing uh you know, I started writing a book um, maybe a couple years ago on on happiness, and uh, you know I, I'm slowly, slowly chipping away at it. Um, you know, I'm sure as you know, writing a book is not an easy uh, endeavor. So uh, eventually, I would like to finish that. And you know, if if one person reads it and is happy, you know, that's that's mission accomplished. Do you have any advice that you may have received that you can pass on to entrepreneurs throughout BC? I sure can, um, and uh, it actually came from a professor of mine when I was doing my my undergrad at Ferris State University. Um, uh, FSU is a a golf school, like we're known for a program called Professional Golf Management. Um, so, you know, one of our professors uh, in in our business law course, uh, you know, kind of opened one of his lectures with. Uh, you know, asking all of us who golfs and, you know, a few of us put up our hands, a few of us didn't. Um, and he said, well, if there, there's one piece of advice I can give you is to learn how to golf. Um, and, and he went on to say, you're going to sign more contracts on the back of a napkin, uh, you know, after a round of golf than you will on eight and a half by 11 in a boardroom. So that that really resonated with me. Uh, obviously, I, I did take up golf, and uh, I'll tell you, is golf uh, has certainly benefited my professional life and uh, taken my career to uh, many different places that I really didn't anticipate. So, uh, I mean, look, not everyone's going to be into it, but that, that's the advice that I can give you. And I imagine not only for you, but I imagine you've seen other deals on the golf course as well outside of your circle of course and and i actually know of a few people that join uh you know country clubs only for the networking component you know and, and to try and you know uh, generate business uh so it happens it truly does uh so uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying okay it's one of those games where you know uh it's a social game. There's, there's, there really aren't any other games like it. Now, do you think it matters how good you are when you're on the course? I mean, as far as business deals and things like that, or is it more what you have to offer businesses and stuff like that? Does the actual your ability come into play? Do you think when you're signing deals and things like that? Uh, you know, I like. I think, like, sure. Like, I mean, if you can keep up with whoever you're playing with, that's maybe something but realistically when i golf with like a novice i'll just say you know what just pick up your ball let's just go putt together i, I mean it, it really doesn't matter to me i i realize that they're not a golfer but they're at least trying and i think that really shows their character is that they're out of their comfort zone and they're they're trying to impress something on me or someone else and that takes a lot of courage. So, you know, I, I would say you're almost going to earn more points if, you, if you're not a very good golfer. And you're out there working it, trying, practicing. It's a plus. For sure. Okay, Brad, you ready to have some fun? Let's do it, my friend. Okay. As you know, entrepreneurs are very busy people. We're always connected, whether it be with staff, clients. Um, we're always on the go. We're going to take you away from all that. There's a small tropical island just off of Fiji that only has one phone booth there. There is no internet. This place does exist. 
We're going to drop you off there. You won't have a computer or a smartphone or a tablet. You can use the phone booth located there. Any time to call the boat, we'll come pick you up. How long would you last before you made that call? And what would you do while you were there? That sounds like a pretty fantastic place. Uh, there, there's often times where I say I just want to disconnect from all technology. You know, like when we go to Maui, we try and shut everything down. Um, you know, I, I think what, if I were dropped on that island, I'd, I'd probably go for a swim, hang out on the beach, uh, try to find some, uh, you know, fruit, you know, like pineapples or mangoes or whatever it is. You know, once I uh, once I kind of got past that, I'd probably be calling you up. So, uh, you know, I'd say uh, I could last maybe three, four hours um, before I'm calling my lifeline uh, because I'm not really a resourceful type of guy. I can't, you know, build like a, a house from scratch or whatever it is, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, as awesome as it would sound to be on a tropical island, uh, you know, I, I probably couldn't do it for much more than a few hours. Okay, Brad, we're going to wrap things up. How can our listeners get hold of you? And is there anything you'd like to add before you leave us today? Uh, you know, I, I would say to, you know, anyone that's thinking of an entrepreneurial venture, as crazy as it may sound to anyone that you talk to or as crazy as it may seem in your mind, just keep going with it and refine it and keep going and pushing yourself until it makes sense. And you know what? That's when you're going to come up with, uh, a, like, truly, like you're trying to solve a problem in the marketplace. And so, if you can solve a problem from some crazy idea, it's going to work. So I would say just stick with your gut and and go with it. So that being said, you know, if, if anybody out there wishes to, you know, reach out to me, I, I'm I'm always available. Uh, you can you can find me on LinkedIn quite easily. Connect with me. Um, or you can look up uh, countryclubx.com and uh, connect with me through there. Okay, well, thank you for coming on the show. I've learned a lot about you, and I'm sure our listeners have as well. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show, Robert. Great. Okay, we'll see you next time.